Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Unfound Podcast channel on YouTube. I am, of course, Unfound's host, Ed Denzel. I hope everybody is doing well today. Please give this video a thumbs up. If you are not yet a subscriber to, uh, subscriber to this channel, please hit the little red box in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. And please, if you find the material provided by Unfound on a, at least a weekly basis, if not even more frequently, please hit the join button below, support this channel that way. We would deeply appreciate it. As the title says, this is a map analysis for the disappearance of Elenia Carissi. This is an episode that came out on February 23rd of 2024. I'm going to go through just a couple locations that were mentioned in the episode, then I will do a wee bit of analysis. What you're looking at on the screen uh, is something that really needs to be considered. Um, hopefully you've already listened to the episode. But you know in my summation I pointed out that the security guard's story, I think there are a lot of reasons to doubt it. Nothing definitive, nothing scientifically that absolutely 100% says he is lying. But there are different angles, whether from how he acted to the, just the pure physics and feet and yards of it, the geography of it, uh, there are reasons to doubt it. Uh, the way we understand how the way the river flows and what we know about how fast people can swim, there are a lot of different reasons. On the other hand, there is the map that you're looking at right now. And I'm leaving it uh, this way. I am going to go to the other uh, the satellite map with an actual picture uh, to show you in a moment. But these little uh, blue dots here, and please forgive my uh, phone, which I'm using to film this, kind of goes in and out very quickly when I put my hand in front of the, the on, on the screen because it's trying to refocus. But... Something that may cause us to believe that the security guard is telling the truth is looking at the distance between where Elena was staying at this very down and out uh, motel hotel called the, the Liddell, L-E-D-A-L-E. -E. It is not there anymore. We have to remember this disappearance is 30 years old. Uh, and the location where the security guard, uh, Mr. Cordova, says that he saw somebody, a woman, go into the Mississippi River. Well, you can see on this map, that's the Mississippi River right there. And you can see that you should know that the river is flowing that way. It is flowing uh, north in this picture. And... Uh, we have to remember that it's not flowing south. In fact, I could just zoom this out maybe at least one time. And I'm leaving it on this view because it's easier to see those blue dots uh, on here instead of with a regular picture like a satellite view. But I am going to go to the satellite view eventually. So it's very close. This is where the, uh, the aquarium is. And right over here to zoom back in is where she was staying. Uh, as it says here, that is 0.7 miles, and walking, it would take 16 minutes. Has to be considered. So it's not like this security guard saw a woman jump into the water 10 miles away. Security guard saw, and I think it was maybe a little bit more down this direction where this green is, like in that park. Still very close. So that may, may lend more credibility to him that, well, if he did see somebody go into the water, what are the odds that it's not Elena, given how close this person jumped into the water to where she was staying, which is right over here uh, in the 700 block of St. Charles Avenue in New Orleans. Maybe you want to go in the, even though I think I made a very good argument, of course, I'm a little biased, 
biased uh, in my uh, talking about what I said, but here is maybe some reason to think, well, he may be telling the truth, given that it was so close. However, if we're to find out that he didn't come forward until after it was known that Elenia was missing, and then he sees that he sees the hotel, which was mentioned in all the articles, and he knows that's just down the street from where he works. Well, then it gets to be quite murkier, whether he's telling the truth or not. He just be maybe wanting to infuse himself into it, being that he knows the motel's, hotel is right down the street from where he works. It's very, very important. And like I said in the episode, I was never really able to determine, uh, at least with the public information, exactly when he says he first reported on seeing somebody going into the water. So very important. I'm not saying there's not paperwork out there that shows that. It's just in all the public accounts, it's not clear. So if you're wondering, uh, and I'm going to go to the satellite view of, of this now. If you're wondering how far across the river is right at this spot, it's a little hard to tell. But you are looking at a river that is almost a quarter mile across at this point. It's almost hard to imagine. A quarter mile across. It's a pretty wide river. And the way he described it is she, the woman, allegedly, maybe I'll scroll this down just a bit to there. This woman goes into the water, and he says that she went 100 yards, so it's 300 feet. So that's approximately one-third to one-quarter of the way across this river. But as I stated, you have to remember the river is moving. The water is moving at an average of um, 3 miles an hour, 4.4 feet per second. And so she, as soon as she would go in the water, she's, go, she's going to be going down this right way. There's now at this turn, being that this turn is so quickly, as I've stated in videos like this before, the water does slow down. That's why you start to get a lot of sediment on the inside. When the water settles, anything that's in the water kind of floating along like dirt and whatever, logs, they will tend to sink then because the water, they're being not pushed forward as much. So you tend to get a lot of debris uh, uh, on the sides. The, but the entire water in any curve is going to slow down. So maybe the flow would slow a little bit as she got down here. And she, you know, she, but she, he says she's trying to swim out into the middle. But I think you can see how quickly she would be downstream. And so she wouldn't just be swimming across if this were a lake and there's no current. And she would be right like here, maybe. She might be 100 yards out, but she's going to be way, you know, way down here somewhere. Now, you, is he embellishing, embellishing? Is he just adding, he's trying to be more and more helpful, so he's trying to add stuff? It's hard to say. But people do that. That is human nature to do that, uh, to kind of start to embellish. There's a real embellish, there's a real story, but the more you start telling it, the more interesting you think you have to sound and maybe you're getting bored of saying the same story over and over. So you add stuff to it that's really not true. As uh, as I like to say one time, uh, sometimes as a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, Three River Stadium in 1972 held about 58,000 people. But you'll run into 200,000 people who will say they were in the stadium that day when Franco Harris caught the immaculate reception. It's kind of the thing I'm talking about. So, once again, this is where she was staying. This is where the, the security guard right in here allegedly found or saw the woman go into the, into the water. And we're just unsure when he let anybody know that he saw this. I want to also add that a man was found during the search for Elenio. The man was found in the water. However, I don't know uh, where that is. It really didn't detail that. But to really zoom this out, You can see we're down here and then the river winds its way the whole way down off the screen into the Gulf of Mexico. But that's where New Orleans is right there. So the river comes around, it snakes around, and there you go. 
So that is my map analysis for the disappearance of Elena Carisi. Thank you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, and I will talk to you again very soon.